Please open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. You know, I, I just, and I'm like you, I love the Word of God. It never gets old. I mean, I've been studying, you know, Ephesians is one of the first books I ever memorized in the Bible. And uh, I was about 22, 23 years old. And it wasn't just enough to read it. I wanted to memorize it. And uh, I, I, through the week, I'm bragging about Jesus. A lot of times, I'll just quote whole books of the Bible. And as I'm quoting them, I'm memorizing, I'm meditating, I'm thinking on the Word. And it never gets old. The Word of God never gets old. And, and, and it, it's like, uh, you know, you can't squeeze every bit out of it. It's just, it's just a river. Every scripture is a river. And, you know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And this morning, we're, we were speaking about speaking the name of Jesus. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And we know the written word is a powerful weapon. But what's amazing is that God the Father has wrapped up everything, all of his authority, all of his power, all of his revelation, all that he is and all that he has in the name of Jesus. Did you know that? How many times have we been in situations where all we could do was cry out, Jesus! And anybody ever been there? And God just super, just speak in the name of Jesus. Just speak in the name of Jesus. And God would step in by just speaking the name. Uh, and and there, there's so much power in that name. Remember, in, in the early church, it, you, we need to realize the greatest threat to the system of the world was the name of Jesus. And it's still true to this day. You know, I've shared that story many times back, oh, I don't know, many years ago, back in the 90s, I got a letter from down in D.C. I can't remember if it was the House or the Senate. And somehow they became aware of me and they invited me to come and pray. And, but in their letter... They basically gave me a uh, freedom to say whatever I wanted to say or pray. But there was one restriction. I could not speak the name of Jesus. Now, why in the world would they do that? Why would they tell me I could not speak the name of Jesus? Because it is a threat to the devil. There's power, there's life. It, as Gary was speaking tonight, there's power, there's life, there's healing, there's deliverance. Our identity is in Jesus. You understand our identity is not in a denomination or a group of people or anything. We identify with Jesus. He took our place. He became poor that we might be made rich. He was made sin that we might be made righteous. I mean, it's all in Jesus. I mean, our salvation is in Jesus. We confess with our mouth. We believe in our heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. And something supernatural happens and we become born again. Say born again. And so we, we, we've got, not, not only do we confess Jesus, but he lives in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. He, he, he is the resurrection and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is, you know, people talk about being inclusive. Well, uh, you can be included, but there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is only the name of Jesus. And, and I know that unless the Father draws us, uh, who the Father sent to us, we, you know, we can't come. Aren't you glad the Father drawed you? Aren't you glad you responded to him? Now, Ephesians is, is so powerful because it was given to the Apostle Paul by the Holy Ghost. And even chapter 1, we know it's amazing. And in chapter 1, it says, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. No, no, we, we can't comprehend this with our natural mind. All of the blessings of heaven are ours. They're not going to be. They're yours right now. Tell somebody they're yours right now. Everything that God has and everything that God has made available is yours right now. But see, how do we apprehend it? How do we take a hold of it? How do we, uh, uh, you know, walk in it? We got to do it by faith now every every human being is born with faith you, you know believe it or not every every person has a smile every person has a smile I, I want you to use your smile just for a moment could you use your smile on somebody come on let's see what kind of smile you can give okay look at that smile now look at there's something about a smile 
I mean, but see, how many people don't use their smile? Think about this. People don't use their smile. And, and you know what? It's believers have faith. You have to purposely, now some people don't have to consciously smile like my wife. She don't have to, I'm telling you what, I, when I first met her, she was smiling and she's been smiling ever since. Now, there's, now, now sometimes her smiles mean, mean different things, so you got to understand this. But there's been many a night that I was uh, wake up and I'm depressed, I'm going through a struggle, and all I got to do is go look at my wife and she's just got a smile on her face. I'm not exaggerating. She's just laying there and smiling isn't that wonderful but you know some of us it takes work to smile <laughs> come on right is that a smile that you know smile right but it takes a work to smile well listen it's the same thing with faith there are some people that just seem to be able to get it they just seem to be able to just zero right in and, and, and really you know it almost makes you feel like that's not fair how come they can, you know, take a hold of God so easily and then other people? And, of course, there's one reason why some people have a struggle is because they're thinkers. I mean, they just, they're analytical, Kathy. <laughs> Are you ever analytical? Well, wonderful. You're not analytical. Well, listen, some people are, how many would acknowledge you think too much? Huh? That, and, and, and that gets you into trouble, doesn't it? Okay? Well, I'm not a real thinker. And if you know me very long, you know that's true and it gets me into trouble. But I'm not a real thinker. But I just look to God. So I want you to see, he says, you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. And then he, let's jump down here to verse 16. He said, I cease not to give thanks for you, make and mention you with my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. That actually is faith. The spirit of wisdom and revelation is when God's word is quickened to your heart and it becomes more real to you than what you're being confronted with. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word. I want you to notice the exceeding greatness of his power to us word, and then notice it clarifies this to those who what? Believe. To those who believe. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Now, now you know. I mean, that sounds wonderful, and it's powerful, and it's awesome. Yes, the exceeding greatness of his power. But it, it can be here and not here. So we, we know that there is no limit to God. There is no limit to God. And all of his unlimited power has been given to us by the name of Jesus. I mean, it's like the, 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 the mystical key that unlocks all of the wealth and treasures and power of heaven. And God has given it to you. In the old covenant, when God appeared to Abraham, he appeared unto him as Jehovah. And as he went along, we saw that there was a progressive revelation. And you probably already know this. There, there's uh, 13 to 17 different Hebrew names for God. When he appeared to Moses, and Moses says, who, who should I send? Who should I say that's sending me? He said, send him, tell him I am that I am, or the El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. And so here, God in the Old Covenant was giving name after name after name to his people, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tiskanu, Jehovah uh, Sitka, uh, Jeho uh, 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 Yahweh, uh, um, uh, Elohim. I mean, just name after name. The very first name in the Bible is the, Greek, is the Hebrew word Elohim, which means plur. When he, when he said, let us make man in our likeness and our image, that's the, that's the Hebrew word Elohim. And so in the Old Covenant, God had all of these names because he was trying to reveal his nature, his character, his personality, his ability to the human race. But in the New Covenant, God wrapped it all up in one name. <laughs> The name Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? And then he gave you his name. He said, and them that believe in my name. Them who believe in my name. See, I believe not only in Jesus, but I believe in his name. 
I believe in his name we can speak to the infirmity. We can speak to the mountains. We can bind the devil. We can call those things which be not as though they were. In the name of Jesus. You know, you heard my message this morning how this week was a real long week where I was struggling with about five, six, seven major uh, physical infirmities that just hit me. I mean, just hit me out of the blue, you know, uh, uh, kidney stones, kidney infection, mouth infection, uh, left foot swallowed up, knee fell, uh, got, got swollen. And, 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 and what was I doing during that time? I wasn't, I wasn't uh, uh, losing it. I wasn't confused. I wasn't upset because I know who my enemy is. See, I know that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Do you know your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? We ought to put up a no trespassing sign. Behind me, know the devil, he's a trespasser, and he will try to come against you. So what do you do in those situations? I'll tell you what I do. I speak the name of Jesus. I declare the name of Jesus. And, and I mean, there, there is, I mean, that one, one uh, Monday morning when it hit me from 9 o'clock until 3 o'clock, I was in such bad condition. I got the chills so bad, my teeth were chattering. And I'm laying in bed, my teeth are chattering, and I'm saying, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I must have said Jesus over a thousand times. But by the, it looked like I wasn't going to make it pr- for prayer on Monday night. But by 3 o'clock, the Spirit of God had, had moved in me, and, and, I, had a, and I, couldn't, I couldn't stand up I couldn't get out of bed I mean it's not that I didn't want to I mean I just had no strength in my body but you know by three o'clock the power of God had hit me and I and and I came over for prayer and 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 to pray with the guys okay because why I'm not a victim I'm more than a conqueror Say, I'm more than a conqueror. Come on, man. See, I want to challenge you. I know that I know that I know that if, if let's say, the reality of God, and, and there's no comparison, was a thousand miles deep, in, like the ocean. Let's say the reality of who God is is a thousand miles deep and a thousand miles high. And if you'd say to me, well, Pastor Mike, how deep and how high have you gone? Well, I hope I've gone at least a foot. But there is no limit. And, and see this unlimited, and we'll see this in Ephesians uh, chapter 3. I, I know that it's one of Gary's favorite scriptures, exceedingly abundantly, above all we could ask or think. But you know what? It's my, one of my favorite scriptures too, Gary. I'm sorry. It's mine too. And how, how many want to grab that as one of your... Okay, so he tells us, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word who believe according to the work of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now listen, uh, verse 21, not when I was a kid, we all had, we had our own uh, 1960-70 vocabulary. How many remember those days? Because we always said, fire out. Did you ever say that, Charles? I, I used to wear uh, big bell-bottom pants. I mean, they weren't the little bell bottoms. I mean, they were big bell bottoms from my knees down. And I used to wear silk shirts, and I would leave my shirt open to see my hairless chest, and I would wear, uh, like, some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of, uh, like, maybe uh, uh, one of the saints, because I was a Catholic, and I was like the mod squad. You ever see the mod squad? Don't watch it. I mean, I had a big old natural afro. I looked like I was a part of the mod squad. When I went to Raymond, you can see my pictures. I had a big old afro, and I had big bell bottoms, and I had that, that silk shirts, multicolored pattern shirts, you know. That, this, this, was, this, was, uh, th- this was after you were already grown up. You never dressed like that, did you? A little bit. A little bit. I, I bet you used to wear a red tie, didn't you? You never wore a red tie. I thought maybe that. But you know what? And, and we would always say, fire out, man. Fire out. Well, you know, that comes out of the Bible. I didn't even know I was declaring the word. And notice what it goes on here. Fire. Say fire. Fire above all principality. Now, Jesus didn't barely overcome the devil. He overcame principalities and powers and made him show them openly triumphing over them in it. There's nothing in this world, past, present, or future, that can hinder God. Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing impossible with God. And then he, Jesus, when he came to this earth, he came down to where we're at. And, and how many know why he came down? He came down to bring us up to where he's at. See, Jesus may have been walking on the earth, 
the kingdom of heaven, Don has been, Donnie has been talking and teaching his Bible study about like this, about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Well, Jesus brought the kingdom of God to the earth. He was operating in the kingdom of God in the earth. And now he turns around and he tells us, because right now there is a kingdom in heaven and all the saints of old that have died. Heaven is populated, by the way. Now, before Jesus died and rose again, they were in the bosom of Abraham. But now all the saints of old, they all have ascended to heaven. And everyone that has died from that moment forward, uh, the, the true believer doesn't descend into the earth where Abraham's bosom was. They ascend to heaven. And heaven is populated right now with millions and millions of people. And you may not think that they're, they're, they're as real as we are, but I, I think they're more real than we are. And heaven is full of godly, holy, dynamic people that have arrived. But the reality of the fact is God has already given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Reach up and grab them. They're yours, man. I'm telling you, they're yours. Well, how do we apprehend it? You got to do it by faith. How would you get the Holy Ghost? You got it by faith. You, you know, people don't understand this. All lack of faith is lack of the word of God in your heart. That's what it is. It's a lack of the word of God. So when the enemy attacks me, what I do is I get more of the word of God. And I, I've got to force feed myself. And so I'd be laying in the bed, you know, shivering. Can, and I can't keep my mouth. You know, my mouth is chattering. And I, I've, I've, got, I've got scriptures. And I'm, I'm like this. And I'm playing the word. And I, I'm listening to the word. I'm saying, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus, double your a liar i'm healed by his stripes jesus 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 and and i'll be honest if you could uh, video record me it sound if you would have uh, audio recorded me it would have sounded pitiful jesus jesus have you ever done that has anybody ever just with a pitiful cry but still you're hanging on you're speaking the word you're agreeing with what god says about you Man, I'm telling you, if I hadn't learned how to do that as a 19-year-old kid, I would have never made it this far. i got to speak the name because I know all that I need, all that I have to have, all that's got to be done is in that name. And, and, and I don't, ha it's not the time to be quoting, you know, whole chapters of the Bible. It's time to speak the name of Jesus. Faith in the name of Jesus. So Jesus came down in order to lift us up. And that's why it says we are seated in heavenly places. Now, some people are going to tell you that that is a, a, a literal physical place. Oh, there is a place in heaven like that. I understand that. But really, it's a spiritual place. It's a place of authority. It's a place of power. It's a place of dominion. For instance, uh, uh, you know, uh, the president, the legitimate president of America, he is president no matter if he's in America or if he's in Russia or if he's in China. He, that's a position. It's a position of authority. It's a position of power. I am seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, you may not see yourself as a king, but you are a king in Christ Jesus. Now, the problem is a lot of times I think we're acting like paupers instead of kings. How many know the words of a king is law? Now, what are we saying? We're, we're saying what God says about us. God says, I'm healed. I'm healed. God says, my needs are met, my needs are met. God says, no weapon formed against me can prosper, it would not prosper. God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Would you agree with that? Do we have any new creatures, new creations here tonight? See, listen, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. That, li that literally means your old vocabulary, your old way of thinking and talking and doing has got to change. You, you got to agree with God. If two be not agreed together, they can't walk together. Far above all principality and power, might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things, say all things. Listen, he's put how many things? He's put all things under his feet. Now, uh, he's going to talk about the body. How many of you are part of the body of Christ? I'm a part of the body of Christ. Well, even if you're the skin on the bottom of the foot, the devil is still under you. Amen. He, he's, the devil is under your feet. Jesus said, you will tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means come to harm you. 
He said, yeah, but if, if, if nothing can come to harm me, then, then what's going on here? You've got to do what Paul said. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. You just got, you got, how many of you ever gone to church by faith? <laughs> come on, how many of you ever given by faith? You ought to give by faith all the time. How, how many of you have ever loved somebody by faith? I mean, it took faith just to love them, right? How many know it takes faith sometimes to love yourself? So you do it all by faith. It says the just shall live by faith, the just shall walk by faith. Now I'm not glorifying faith, it's just that God is a God of faith. And God, God gave us, he's the author and finisher of our faith. He said, and, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And then chapter two, you had the quick and who were dead in trespasses and sins. And so Paul really gets in some, into some amazing details of the condition we were in and that we were under a, a, the, the spirit of disobedience at one time. See, that's what unbelief is. It's a spirit of disobedience, but I'm no longer under the control of the devil. I've been translated out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of God. Is that based on feelings? Is that based on your looks? Aren't you glad? Is that, ba is that based on your IQ? Is that based on your age or the color of your skin? No, it's all based by faith, isn't it? Say, it's by faith. See, we need to learn this. God wants us to learn. The world don't know, have no idea what faith is. People say, well, faith is like a light switch. When you hit the switch, it comes on. No, it's not because that's just natural. Na that's natural laws. See, faith is only, and, and there is only one faith. People say, well, do, do, do you have the Muslim faith or the Hindu faith or Christian faith? No, no, them, that's not faith. That's deception. Then people are deceived. It says in Hebrews 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance, but faith in, in what? Faith in God, faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus is a substance. What do you think caused Jesus, and he had faith in himself? He said, if some deny me, I can't deny myself. Let God be true and every man a liar. What do you think kept Jesus from sinking, walking on the waves of the Sea of Galilee at night in a storm. It was faith. Faith was the substance. It was faith that kept him afloat. And when Peter looked out there and saw and, 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 and discovered it was Jesus, he, he said, Lord, if that's you, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. And, and Peter, by faith in Jesus, stepped out of the boat and he walked on the, the water. That was faith keeping him afloat. What, what do you think it is? Uh, it's faith in God that opens the door for the Spirit of God to come and do a creative miracle in your body. The Holy Ghost is looking for the Word of God and faith. That's what the Holy Ghost is looking for. And matter of fact, that's why after the day of Pentecost, it says, and the Holy Ghost went everywhere with them, confirming his, his word with signs following. God confirms his word and not our opinions. Aren't you glad? Wouldn't it be a mess if God confirmed our opinions? <laughs> oh, man, we wouldn't have no hope. I'd be saying, oh, God, please don't confirm my opinion. <laughs> confirm your word and so I know I really like chapter 3 and so let's go to chapter 3 in a very familiar set of scriptures and I actually was going to go in a completely different direction tonight but this is where I'm just being quickened by the Holy Ghost because I want to show you something here because we know now we already have everything that pertains to life and godliness according to the book of uh, epistle of Peter that we have been blessed uh, and that we have all spiritual blessings and all the promises in Jesus Faith in Jesus, all the pro I said all the promises with faith in Jesus is yea and amen. Well, Pastor Mike, how come I'm not experiencing them? I don't, I don't know why. How come we're not? We can. How many of you know that what we've experienced in God so far is, is just so, so, so little? I, I, I'm embarrassed. 
You know, I, I, my, my wife would like to always go down to Rehoboth Beach or down there in Bethany Beach. And she, she, I don't really like the ocean that much. You know, I was a seaman and it, I worked on it. I fished on it. But I don't really like it that much. You know, some of you guys, I had enough fishing when I lived in Alaska and I worked on the gill nets and the halibut boats. And if you ever seen the most dangerous catch, I've been out there in some of those storms. I, I'm so glad I'm not out there no more. And the problem was, I could, I, in those days, I'd get easily seasick. So can you imagine? Imagine, I'm out there, man, as sick as a dog, uh, pulling in the salmon with the gill nets, you know. But I would be down there at the ocean, and, and this is, and my, my wife had a, a little thimble. How many of you ladies still have thimbles? Any of you ladies still have thimbles? And, 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 and this is what I did. I, I took that little thimble one day, and, and, and I thought, okay, and I filled that thimble full of water. And I looked out there, and I looked at the water in that thimble, and I said, that's Mike Yeager. That little bit of thimble of water, that's Mike Yeager. <laughs> and I poured it into the palm of my hand, and I said, compared to who God is and what God has. Think about it. That little, I've got, I've got it all. Praise the Lord. I've got it all. No, you, got, no, you don't. You have a, a thimble. Maybe you have a cup. Maybe, you, maybe you've got a pitcher. Wow, that's amazing. But how many you know when you look at the ocean? See, I'm telling you, and God's not locking us out of that realm where all things are possible. Well, what keeps us out of that dimension? It's our flesh. It's our unrenewed mind. It's, it's the corrupted nature that we have not yet crucified. That's what's keeping us out of that. Uh, you know, and then some people, when they learn to tap in to more of God than others, it, it goes to their head. And they think, wow, ain't I something special? No, we're all something special. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. We're all somebody special. Tell the person next to you, you are somebody special. Come on, you should be able to say that. <laughs> Amen. And so notice in verse 17. Well, let's begin with verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the curse we're celebrating Father's Day, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches, the riches of his glory. Oh, that's another subject. There's no end to God's glory. The riches of his manifested presence to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell where? In your hearts by faith. Christ in you by faith. Now, when I was a kid, I don't know what they do anymore, but when I was a kid, we were all into hot rods. Any of you guys into hot rods? I mean, we, we took an old Chevy Nova two-door. We pulled out that engine, and we stuck a, and, and, and the 327 wasn't made to go in there. And we cut, we cut the, uh, the, 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 the inner walls out, and we dropped a 327 right down, and we had to make our own mounts, and we hooked it up to the transmission. And the guy and I, we, we, there was a group of us guys doing that, and we took, i tell you what, it was dangerous. But now, when you looked, when you looked at that, that Nova, you couldn't tell what was under the hood. Uh, it reminds me, I told you the story many years ago back, but when I was uh, 20 years old, I was back in Wisconsin, and I needed to go somewhere, and the next door, neighbor, next door neighbor lady, she had a 500 Galaxy Ford. Any of you remember them? Oh, big, big, big. Now, I thought that car, that car, that car was a, 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 just a dead horse because whenever you, you didn't want to get behind her because she just went so slow, and I'm thinking, oh, man, that big old gas hog, it, what kind of junky engine does it have? And, and so I went over and said, listen, uh, I said, can I, can I borrow your car to go? And she knew me. Can I, I need to go to town for a moment. She said, yeah, go ahead, Mike. She gave me the keys, and I got in, and I thought, I don't really want to take this old big boat of a car anywhere. But I turned the engine, and when I started it, I thought I'd better give it a little bit of gas. And when I did, it shocked me. The whole, uh, the whole body shook. I went, I went, what in the world? I thought, man, what is under the hood of this car? Because she's driving it like it, does, it can barely get along. So I put it in reverse. I gave it a little bit of gas, and my tire spun. So I, I, I'm sorry I was born again, but I just couldn't help myself, Gary. So I thought, well, I'm going to take this baby and see what she can do. And, and, and I took it out on the highway, 
and I put the pedal to the metal, and I mean that thing pinned me to the back of that chair. I went, I thought, whoa. But you'd have never known it the way that she drove it. Listen, that's the way a lot of our live, us are living our lives. You'd never know that, the, that, that Jesus himself lives in us. Wow, it's amazing what God can put in earthly vessels. Jesus in you, the hope of glory. It's not just in the apostle. We've got the same Jesus that was in Paul, Peter, James, and John. He's in us. Yay. Hallelujah. Where's our party hats and our whistles? We ought to hand them out. Whee! He's in us. You know, that's why that the Bible says, don't, don't fear what man can do f- to you, because if God be for you, who can be against you? Uh, you say, this is real big talk, Pastor Mike. It's not talk, it's truth. But he says he's got to dwell in you by faith. So to the level of faith that you have of Jesus in you is to the degree that you will see the manifested glory Because the Holy Ghost is looking for faith. You understand? That's what Jesus was looking for everywhere. He's looking for faith. And when he found faith, he he boasted about it. He said, Centurion, he said, I have not found no man in all of Israel with great faith like this guy has. Now, if I would have been standing there as one of the uh, disciples, I, I would have been jealous. I said, well, the guy's a Roman centurion. How how did he have that kind of faith? If he's got that kind of faith, I want that kind of faith. Hello? I mean, then he said to the Canaanite woman, right? He, he, when, 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 when she said, Lord, my, you know, she's crying out after Jesus and he ignores her. And the disciples are upset because she's yelling. See, faith doesn't care what people think. Faith just knows what it needs and it goes for it. And she was going after Jesus. See, she wasn't going after his disciples. She's going after Jesus. See, I really believe that there's men and women of God that got to the place in Jesus. And when people went there, they weren't going for the person. They were going for the Jesus that was manifested in that person. How many know you can have a greater manifestation every day of your life? I mean, we can, but see, we allow the cares of life, uh, our feelings, our emotions, our circumstances, the present conditions to come in. Smith Wigglesworth, he said he was just a plumber. He, he never was and never will be my hero. But Smith, said, Smith Wigglesworth said, a man, every morning he can get up, seek God in his daily life. He was a plumber, and he can be more full of Jesus when he goes to bed than when he got up. When he got up. He said it won't be very long before God begins to show up wherever you go. Yeah, he, 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 he is a perfect example of that. We can be more full of Jesus. Now, I re- realize we're having to deal with the flesh, the world, and the devil, and loved ones. I understand these things. But really, if you decide, if I decide in my heart, I want more of God. You said, well, how can you get more of God when God already lives in you? Well, uh, Paul tells us we could. Let's see what he says here. And, and he says here that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded, what? In love, the divine nature. See, the divine nature, I mean, if faith is going to grow and mature in you, faith that worketh by love. And how many of you ever had a spirit of compassion hit you and you walked into a situation where everything was possible? Uh, and and the, 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 I, I've seen this many times in my life, but the most, uh, the most uh, what I would say, the, the, the greatest illustration I think it is, back in about 2016, my wife and I are at, at, at uh, the... Um, where are we at? We're over there at that restaurant Cracker on, Barrel. huh? Cracker Barrel. I don't really like it, but my wife wanted to go have breakfast. I was quick in my heart, go to Cracker Barrel. We get there, we get our meal, we're sitting there, and two ladies are running through the place saying, is there a doctor, is there a nurse, is there a doctor? And I'll usually get up and see what I can do. Uh, but I just sensed in my heart, no, sit here, finish your meal, was almost done. We got done, I come around the corner, and right there, as you come into the dining room area, there was a crowd of people, and I looked, and there was a lady on the floor, a heavyset lady, probably in her mid-60s, and she's laying on the floor on the left side, and there's a nurse 
uh, holding her hand, and, and she's trying to find the pulse, and here the lady up and died on her. I mean, the lady's dead. They're, they're waiting for them to come and take away the body. My, I'm telling you what, because I was rooted and grounded in love. I had been spending time in the word of God. See, I'm not trying to work up a miracle. I'm not trying to produce a miracle. How, how many ladies know that in order to have a baby, you got to conceive to have a baby? You, you got, I don't care how much you groan or moan or carry on. If, if you don't have a, a life growing inside of you, you're not going to give birth. Well, I had spent time with Jesus like all of us can. Uh, God's not respect your people. And when I seen that lady, the spirit of love hit me. I mean, the, the, it was my mom. Now, my mom had died back in 2000, but that's like my natural mom on the floor. My eyes filled with tears. I'm not even thinking what I'm doing. I, I say, excuse me, I'm a pastor, excuse me. And I walked over to that lady. My wife stayed behind, and I got down on my knees, and I put my hand on her face. Her face was cold. I mean, it was ice cold. And I just, all I did, all I remember is speaking in the name of Jesus and commanding her to live. I'm telling you, the moment I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to live, I, the nurse got excited. And she said, she's got a pulse. She's got a pulse. I mean, it was that simple. Listen, if we're rooted and grounded in love, if Christ is in us by faith, I tell you, we, we can walk in a realm where all things are possible. I mean, all things are possible. You know, people are trying to find all kinds of uh, deep spiritual, mystical, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, equations and, 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 and solutions. No, it's right here. If, you're, if, if Christ is in you by faith and you're rooted in ground and love. So I, I, I prayed and, and all of a sudden, you know, she came back to life. And that lady who's laying on her left side, her, her right wrist is in the hands of the nurse. The nurse is all excited. This woman reaches her hand up, grabs my hand that was on her face, squeezed it to let me know that she was okay now. I think her soul was hovering above her body. She saw me come and speak the name of Jesus, and the Spirit of God brought her soul back into her body, and God healed her. And I knew my job was done. I didn't stand up and wait for the, uh, for the TV stations or the radio stations or the police to come. I just got up, walked through the crowd, walked back outside with Kathy, and there comes the ambulance, and we left. You know why? Because Jesus, I'm sure they said, who was that man? <laughs> But it wasn't me, it was Jesus. Oh, I said, it's Jesus. I don't heal you, Jesus heals you. Yes, it's the Spirit of Christ, it's the Holy Ghost. Yes, it's God, but it's the Lord that does it. And so, it goes on here, that we, that we uh, back here, now on, uh, back in verse 18 may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Now listen to this as we get ready to close. That you might be what? Now this is strange. You ever look at this set of scriptures? That you might be filled. Pastor, I thought we were already filled with all the fullness of God. That's not what Paul said. Paul said it's yours. Paul said he's already blessed you. He's already provided for you. He's already living in you. But he said that you might be filled. Now li listen to this. This is mind-boggling. I mean, it just, you know, it so overwhelms me. I, I don't know if I can stand on my feet tonight. That you might be filled with how much? How much? All the fullness of God. <laughs> what? Did you know the fullness of the Godhead was bodily dwelling in Jesus? Remember I told you Jesus came to bring you to where he lived, where he is? All the fullness of the Godhead was in Jesus. And then Jesus turns around and says, listen, uh, 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 blessed believer, all the fullness of God can be manifested in you. Now, I don't think any other, anyone other than Jesus has ever really came to that point where all the fullness of God was manifested. But I've read of stories of men and women who got to the place where they were so full of God. 
Whoa, how many have ever word, read the book for Mary Woodworth Eder, Signs and Wonders? If you haven't read that book, you ought to get that book and get it on Amazon. Signs and Wonders. Now, that little lady, as a young girl, she was called of God to preach. But in those days, in the mid-1800s, they wouldn't let women preach. You know, they, they, they didn't realize there's neither male nor female bond nor free. They don't understand, realize the first preacher of the gospel was Mary Magdalene coming back saying, He's alive, he's alive, he's alive. And, but, but anyways, so she was called of God, and, but she couldn't fulfill her calling because nobody would accept her. And so she got married, and she ended up having like five children. Well, tragically... All of her children died. Now, that's tragic, isn't it? Now, she's born again, but all of her children died. Well, her daughter, as her, she's on the be- deathbed, they were all Christians. Her, her young little girl said, uh, Mommy, I see Jesus. He's coming to get me. Oh, the, the Lord's coming to get me. Mommy, obey God. Mommy, obey God. You've got to preach. You've got to preach, Mommy. And so she's weeping, and she repented. She said, okay, honey, I'll do it. I'll do it. She didn't have no children left. And so, you know, if you think the end of a life, it was just her beginning. She didn't know this. And this is what she did. She said, God, I will preach the gospel, but I got to submit to my husband. You've got to speak to my husband. And, and, and so, amazingly, her husband, and I'm sure she tried to convince him through the years, but he couldn't be convinced, but God got a hold of him not too long afterwards. And so he came, and he, and he told her, Honey, I know you're called to preach the gospel, and I'm going to support you in preaching the gospel. And, and so then she began, and she began, like, doing home Bible studies, and then she began to doing Sunday schools, and, and, and she didn't have a divine revelation of healing yet. She didn't have a divine revelation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and she didn't go into great details, but somehow she got baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Right there, uh, close, you know, to the early 19, or 19, at the end of the 1800s. So she got filled with the Spirit, and then now she began to experience healing. And she began to pray for people, and they began to get healed. And not a lot in the beginning, but she's just going, she's getting filled with all the fullness of God. Just a little bit. You know, the Bible says, be not drunk with wine, word, and excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, now have any of you ever uh, been drunk in the natural you know, how did you get drunk in a nap? First time I was drunk, I was seven years old at a Catholic wedding, and I was going around and stealing everybody's beer. And I mean, I mean, I still remember as a little boy vomiting in the bathroom, and I had an over, I had a hangover the next morning at seven years old. But, but you know how I got that way, Charles? I got that way by drinking. I had to drink. I had to drink. So how do you get filled with the Spirit? Speaking to yourself. How do you get full of, filled with the fullness of God? Speaking to yourself in what? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we're not trying to find uh, the, the, the mystical solution. We've got it. So the next thing, this, I'm telling you what, is you get this book's about 500 pages. And as you begin to get into it, the next thing she knew, and I've experienced this in a couple services, not near as many as I should, but she would be up there preaching. She had to go in tents, and that's what she preached in, tents. And she started many churches across America, more out west than on the east coast. Uh, But she would be preaching, and all of a sudden, as she's preaching, somebody fell in her service like they were dead men. Boom. Never saw it before. Never heard of it. And they didn't have the books like we got today. She didn't know about Charles Finney as far as I know and other men that walked in that room. And then another person fell. Well, from that day forward, they began to fall in her services. She'd, been in tr- she'd be preaching, and all of a sudden, whole congregations would fall out under the glory of God. I mean, come on, dog. The glory of God. Because she was getting filled, she's going deeper and deeper and higher and higher. You know, we get a little bit of that and we think, whoa, revival's here. Well, you know what? I, and and I, I, this is what the book said. It said that then people outside of the tent began to fall into the power of God. I remember back in 1980, I was holding a tent service in the Huntington Fair, and the Lord spoke to me. We were praying. I had a team of young bucks like me, and I said, now get ready. I said, when I start preaching, the Lord said to me, people are going to start falling under the power of God. And they said, really? I said, yeah. 
And so I'm up there preaching, and, and somebody walking by the tent, down they'd go. I go, go get them. I remember one day in a particular situation, I'm preaching, and there's an old lady walking by with, with, with a, a cane or something, and all of a sudden, right down she went, boom. I said, go get her, guys, drag her in here, and we led her to Jesus. So they're falling outside of her tent, and then they're falling under the power of God up to a block away. And there they're falling under the power of God up to a mile away. And they were in their horses, in their carriages. They're falling out as she's preaching. As she's preaching the word of God, they're falling under the power of God. And the last report that I had read in that book, it had been connected to where when she was preaching, people up to 50 miles away were falling under conviction under the power of God. Don't tell me we've seen anything yet. I tell you what, this lady, she got to the place where she was so filled with all the fullness of God to where she would be up there preaching and she literally would glow. Her face would begin to shine like an angel, like a light bulb. The people, they were looking at this little, I think she was only like four foot eight. Something like that, four foot two, something, you could look it up. But she'd be up there preaching, and she, she didn't even know what was going on. She's so deep in the Holy Ghost. She's just preaching the word of God, and all of a sudden, she, her skin would begin to glow like a light bulb. And the people out in the congregation, they're rubbing their eyes, and the power of God's hitting them, and they begin to weep and cry. Then it got, see, signs and wonders. She would be preaching at times where all of a sudden she would just freeze in place. Now, this is not exaggeration. They, they, they've got reports of this even in the newspapers. And in her book, they show you the newspaper clippings. She'd be preaching. She'd freeze in place. And everybody that would look at her would be convicted. And people would be coming through. They were like tourists. They're coming through the tent, getting saved without her speaking a word. She, she was somewhere in the spirit, and, she, and, and one time, the longest time they said this happened, for three days, she was frozen in place, and she picked up where she left off. <laughs> come on, Pastor Pete, come on. Do you know what's available for us? I'm not saying we seek signs and wonders and miracles. No, she wasn't seeking that stuff. It follows. As you get filled, now listen, do you understand? I'm proclaiming your heritage. I'm proclaiming God's promises to you. I'm telling you, it, 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 it's not reserved for the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. You can walk in this realm where all things, and I do believe in these last days, God is going to raise up people that are going to get, uh, uh, that Christ is going to dwell in their hearts by faith, and they are going to be rooted and grounded in love, and they are going to know the height, the depth, the width, and the length, and the breadth of God's love, and they're going to get full of the word, and we're going to have revival like we never thought possible. But it won't be one or two or three. It'll be hundreds and thousands of men and women who have embraced the truth now unto him that is able now on to him. Oh, I'm excited, Pastor Charles. Now on to him. That is, won't that make a wonderful difference in your ministry, Brother Charles? If you're standing up there and all of a sudden you start glowing like a light bulb. <laughs> won't that make a wonderful difference in your ministry? Huh? So it says, now on to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to to the power that worketh in us. What's the power? The power of faith, the power of love, uh, the, 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 the power of the word. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Will you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout? Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on. Well, uh, Pastor Mike, why aren't you walking there? I haven't paid the price, but I've got to pay the price. I've got to pay the price. I've got to pay the price. There's a price to be paid. Now, as a young kid, I was 22 years old, met Kathy, and uh, we began to, uh, I'm going to call it date, we would go to church, and I was invited to go preach at a church. And I'm just a young buck, 
And I'm just going after Jesus. I, I'm going after the word. I'm not trying to get God to do anything. And, and I go into this church service never expecting anything's going to happen. I'm just going to preach the word. And so I'm standing there and I, and, and I put my hands up in the air. Now listen, signs and wonders. I'm telling you, somebody grabbed my hands. I mean, they grabbed my hands and picked me up on my tiptoes. I can't even get on my tiptoes right now. Pick me up on my tiptoes, and I'm standing through the whole worship service, and I said, Kathy. Now, she's dating me. I, this must have been weird to her, you know, because who, who is this guy? He's a flake. I said, Kathy, what? I said, I can't get off my tiptoes. I can't get my hands down. She said, what? I said, I can't get my hands down. <laughs> so uh, the this worship service ended. Now, I'm... Everybody sits down. I'm still there on my tiptoes like this. A spectacle. I'm on my tiptoes. Kathy sits down. She's looking up at me. I'm on my tiptoes. So the, the pastor, he, he receives the offering and gives the announcement. He said, now we, we got uh, Mike Yeager. He's looking at me. He, he's going to come and preach. And, and I'm like, okay. All right, I'm going to go and preach. So it's time for me to come up. So I'm on my tippy toes. And I tippy toe like a ballon, ballerina dancer. And I go up there, up on, my tip, on the very tip of my tippy toes. Uh, remember that, baby doll? In my hands, I'm, I mean, I'm being stretched. I mean, it's like there's an angel up there laughing. And he's got a hold of my hands. He's got me up on my tippy toes. I, get, I said, Kathy, I said, you're going to have to hold my Bible for me. She said, what? I said, I can't get off my tippy toes. I said, you're going you're gonna to have to hold my Bible for me. So she gets up there. Now, I couldn't, even though I was young and, and in good physical condition, there ain't no way I could get up on my tippy toes like that for more than five minutes. But, but I get up there. So through the whole worship service, I'm on my tippy toes, through the offering, through the announcements. I get up there, and it was, there, was, there was a stage, and I walk up on the stage on my tippy toes, and I turn around, and Kathy is holding my Bible for me as I'm preaching. I'm preaching up on my tippy toes the whole sermon. I mean, the whole sermon. I'm up on my tippy toes, people. I'm not exaggerating. They all saw it. Remember that, baby? I'm on my tippy toes. Well, when I got done preaching the message that God wanted me to preach, I don't even remember what I preached, you know. But I tell you what, all of a sudden, it's like I, 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 my hands, I, I felt it just, and I came right back down on my, on my uh, feet. Now, you know what? Standing on my tippy toes like that for probably almost two hours, don't you think I would get leg cramps? Don't you think my feet would hurt? Not one cramp and not one negative result. What was that? That was the glory of God. We'll give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. See, I, I'm telling you, Pastor Gary, he was prophesying, we ain't seen nothing yet. Just get it out of your head what you think God wants to do and how God's going to do it. We just got to say, Lord, let, let your will be done. So, Father, we thank you uh, that this, this message tonight will stir people up until we can go to heights and depths that we can only not even imagine. Father, take your church there. Take your church into that presence of your glory. Uh, take your church into that realm where all things are possible. And Lord, it's not just one or two or three, uh, but it's the body of Christ. And wherever they go, conviction falls and people are healed and devils come out and the dead are raised and the lepers are cleansed and the blind see and the deaf hear. Lord, even as Smith Wigglesworth and, 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 and Mama uh, Jenkins and, and Mary Wood worth at her they would literally go in and clean out schools of the blind and schools for the insane and they had to shut them down lord i thank you that we need that more today than we ever have and lord we confess and we declare in the mighty name of jesus we will have it i said we will have it reach up and grab it we will have it we will have it we will have it we will have it in the name of jesus <laughs> Woo! Woo! See, God never, God never meant for you to minister with your limited ability. God meant for you to minister in the Holy Ghost and power. Amen. Holy Ghost and fire. Put your hands on your bellies and close your eyes. The Bible says, out of your belly, out of your belly out of your belly will flow
Rivers! Woo! Rivers! Rivers! Lord, we command those, those whatever is clogging the pipeline, we command it to go. Lord, break open. <laughs> Lord, break open. Lord, let it bubble. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, let it flow out of these bellies. Lord, 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 let those prophetic callings that you've given them, oh, that divine anointing, oh, the divine purpose in our lives, Lord, not only in this father and this mother, but the daughter and the son and the grandson. Oh, Lord, the callings of God without repentance. Let it begin to flow through this family, Father. Let it begin to flow through this family, Father, like never before. Lord, begin to visit this home. Begin to visit this home. Oh, Lord, I see, I see the son coming home. And the Spirit of God is so powerful and so strong in that home where he'll begin to weep and cry and he'll fall on his face and he'll repent and he'll once again just totally give himself over to the call of God on his life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> completely given over, completely given over to God, completely given over to God. Completely given over to God. Completely given over to God. Completely given over to God, Howard. Oh, Howard, put your hands on your belly. Oh, put your hands on your belly. Oh, Lord, let it flow. Let the rivers flow out of your people, God. Oh, like a mighty river, God. Lord, when you spoke to that rock in the wilderness, rivers flowed and it fed the multitudes. It gave thirst to the millions. It gave, took, it gave water to the millions. Oh God, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow out of Howard, Father. Let it 